it hurts mum the weight of the dressing as if there is another face on Grace's face or the swelling of her own as if another face inside her face is ripping its way through to be seen with scalpel talons the car leaves the carriageway and moves down a slip road and through a village which suggests the world removed from that one in the mechanical thunder on the overpass above which keeps the beamed pub in almost permanent shadow below here red brick cottages abut fields all traffic is stilled two hunch smokers huddle in the door with the farmer's arms and the branches of trees still bear traces of off-white snow like a growth like mold they pass horses grace and a mother in the car two big brown horses standing at a fence their breath fog in their faces as if they burn inside Grace takes a minute a glance and says again, it really, really hurts, Mum. I know it does, love. But end of the day, it's going to be worth it, yeah? You will see. When the bandages come off, you will see. When's that? What? When the bandages come off? They can come off soon, but the splint's got to stay on for a couple of weeks, yeah? Then plugs as well, the surgeon said. These plugs, a couple of weeks, that's what they said. Grace moans. Grace, you wanted this, love. And I paid good money for it, yeah? Takes more codeine if it's hurting in the glove box there. Water in there as well. Grace pops two pills from the blister pack. Normally I bring a book on stage, but I'm so sick of losing books in pubs and things that I've actually photocopied it. Down with water, winces she swallows, coughs and whimpers with the pain. She wants to look at herself in the vanity mirror, but on the sun visor, but she's already seen herself, and she knows and loads what she looks like. The blue bruised eyes and the swollen red sockets, the straight H-shaped lines of the splints like an insult to the curvature of her face, the bandages already manky with leakage. Yesterday, in a big brown building in a big city just over the border to the east, masked men had, in an oval room behind the room with the stack of magazines and the fish tank in which the bog-eyed fish swam aimlessly and said, oops knocked her comatose with drugs as she lay supine on a table under a burning white light and then they drew on her face on the clear skin of her face and then put a nail-like implement a chisel-like thing up her nostril and hit it three times with something that looked like a hammer it was a hammer a small hammer blood left and ran it did shocking red under the under the bright white light steel tools were laid out clean and gleaming and sharp as razors blades hooks grapples vices the masked men forced tubes into grace's throat pushing insistence against the resistance of muscle the zala came in grace's system before it turned her face to a mask caused skin and muscle to twitch and jitter and jump and the girl in her catatonia turned her head a little to the left and whimpered and moaned the men clamped her head still twin that clamp with a smaller one on her nose used a hammer and chisel thing hit and hit until the bone of the bridge broke and the entire nose, when it was wiggled between latex glove, finger and thumb, crunched and gave and sank like a rotted plum. Each nostril was then prized open, giving out blood another large gout, and the scalpel thing was wormed in, and sickle shapes of cartilage sliced away, sawn away, and lay, deposited on white cloth, on a gleaming silver tray where they lay, earthworms in the sun, once living things desiccated, dead, under the always burning overhead light, bits of flesh, matter, tweezed out of the bloody black runnels the nostrils had become. Curls and twists, maroon and purple and scarlet, bruise began to bloom. Okay, said one of the men in the masks. Now we can really go to work. Now we can make good. <laughs>